This is the new Skoda Octavia and it's a little bit like the county of Norfolk in the way that it's pretty blooming big. It's relatively inexpensive and while it might seem not very exciting, if you dig a little deeper, it may surprise you. And in this video, I'll explain why. And before you ask, the video hasn't been sponsored by the Norfolk Tourist Board, honest. Let's start this video by talking about the price because that matters with the Skoda Octavia because it's all about value for money. This new one starts from just over £22,000, that's for the hatchback. You'll have to pay an extra £1,000 for the estate version. Now you can save an average of almost £3,000 off on through Carway. Look at that, it's not bad is it? Now if you click on the pop out banner up there, you can go straight to Carway to see how much money you can save on a new car and also do your research to help you decide which car to buy. Now you might be thinking that this doesn't look all that new, it looks rather like the old Skoda Octavia. Well the big difference is that it doesn't have those twin headlamps. Other than that though, it is rather similar. It's not particularly exciting but then it's not offensive either. It's sort of the Skoda way. At the side it's all very skoda -y as well, so not in your face, especially in this metallic blue paint scheme. Wheel sizes start at 16 inches, then for this SEL first edition you get 17 inches. You get some roof rails on the estate version which are a bit lifestyle-y, and there's some more creases in the bodywork than before, but other than that it's all Skoda business as usual really. Now while the rest of the design of this car is a little bit so what, the back end is actually pretty smart. I like the look of it. They've given it a slightly bigger roof spoiler than before, which is obviously essential on this car. And I do like the way that they've not bothered with any kind of fake exhausts or vents. There's just this weird shelf there though, where you can, I don't know, lose your mobile phone. And they've written Skoda really big on the back because they're clearly quite proud of who they are now. It's actually pronounced Skoda but I'm not actually from the Czech Republic. I'm from Warsaw in the West Midlands, so I just say Skoda. Now, if you want to know how to pronounce car brands correctly, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my very educational video. Now, there is something familiar about the taillights of this car. Do you know what? They remind me of the upside-down taillights from the BMW 3 Series Touring. Look at this, see, it's like that, but flipped upside down. I wonder if Skoda's designers kind of got inspiration from the 3 Series Touring while they're doing yoga, you know, like downward dog. Ah. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm going on about. You'll be able to get the Skoda Octavia with a wide range of engine choices and it can get a little bit confusing. So petrol engines for the normal car include a one litre three cylinder turbo petrol with 110 horsepower and mile hybrid technology. Then there's a 1.5 litre petrol with 150 horsepower. That is available with or without mild hybrid technology. Then there's a diesel, so you can have a two litre diesel with 115 horsepower or one with 150 horsepower, which is what this car has. Then there's the plug-in hybrid, which has a 1.5 four litre petrol engine combined with a big electric motor to give you 204 horsepower. Finally there's the sporty VRS models which you can get as a normal petrol so that has 245 horsepower from a two litre turbocharged petrol engine. Then there's a diesel version which has a two litre diesel with 200 horsepower and you can get that car with all-wheel drive. The rest of the Octavia range is front-wheel drive. And then there's the Sporty VRS plug-in hybrid model, which is the same as the other plug-in hybrid, but it has 245 horsepower. I hope you've got all that because I'm not repeating it. This particular car has a two litre, 150 horsepower diesel engine and Skoda says it should be able to do naught to 60 in 8.8 .8 seconds. So I'm about to do something no Skoda Octavia owner will ever do and that's launch their car. I'm gonna time it to see what the actual naught to 60 is using my specialist timing gear up here. So I've got it in sports mode for the gearbox. Let's just hold on the brake and then steady away with a bit of tire squeal. How very unskoda Octavery. Octavery? Anyway, with a <laughs> Skoda, they didn't lie. Not 60, eight seconds. Skoda's completely revamped the interior of the Octavia and it is a lot more modern, mainly because most of the buttons have been removed and that's because a lot of the functions like the climate control are now through this touch screen. This is the upgraded larger touch screen, but all cars are standard get a digital driver's display and I'll go into more detail on the technology later on in the video. As for the rest of the interior, it's not as drab as it could be because it's lightened up by various shiny bits of trim. And look, this one has faux suede. 
on the dash. Mm, lovely. Now the materials are generally pretty good and the places that you touch or lean on are all yielding and nice. Another key feature is the fact that Skoda's now fitting this car with a two-spoke steering wheel. And I kind of get why they've done that. It's because people who drive Skoda Octavia's probably do lots of miles and eventually their hands just kind of just slip there and they just need to be supported as they do yet another 100 miles at the motorway. And you're going to be able to get comfy in this car because look, they do all the basics right, Skoda. Lots of adjustments in the steering wheel, lots in the driver's seat. So you can chuck it up quite high because there's plenty of headroom. And of course, there's enough room to push the seat all the way back if you've got really, really long legs. In terms of the quality in here, generally, it's all pretty decent. There are a few scratchy plastics lower down, though, to be fair, that's to be expected on a car of this price. Where Skoda has dropped the ball, though, is by not putting some padding on the door handle. That's just cheap plastic. They should have done that. It's a bit of an oversight. But overall, it feels like good value for money and not cheap in any way, shape or form here in the cabin. Here in the back seats, the Octavia is quite simply superb. Yeah, that's a joke for Skoda fans. You don't actually need the larger superb because look how much knee room I've got. And there's lots of foot space as well. And you can slide your feet into the chair in front because they're raised up slightly. That's all good. Headroom is decent, look at that as well. Even though this car has the optional panoramic sunroof, FYI, you can only get it on the estate and it costs 1,100 pounds, but it does make you feel nice and light in here. I quite like it. If you don't have that fitted, there's even more headroom. That might be better if you're gonna be using this car as a taxi. It's quite a wide car actually, so if you need to carry three at once, there is a bit of a hump in the floor for people to get their legs over, but once they're in the middle seat, there's a decent amount of room and a decent amount of headroom as well. It's all good, very comfy back here. One last thing to do though, rear window test. Will it go all the way down? Will it people? Watch it, will it, will it, will it? Yeah, it does. Another great thing about the Octavia Estate is the size of its boot. It is huge. The capacity is 640 litres, which if that means nothing to you, it's a lot of litres and more litres than you can fit in its key rivals. The opening's nice and wide as well. And if you have the optional, false floor. There is no load lip to lift stuff over. Look, you can just sit there and present your video to YouTube comfortably. There's this weird divider in this car. You can move it around, lift that up, put it in different places. But what I don't understand is what these bits are for. Maybe so you can use it as a measuring device. So look at this, I can measure my cranial width. Looks like I've got a very thin head. Or maybe it's for measuring something else. There's also lots of extra useful features here in the boot. So you've got these hooks and they're really decent hooks to hang your shopping bags off. There's some other tie down points here. And you've got storage areas here and here either side of the boot. Also, if you lift up this false floor, which is standard on SEL models, then you do have to pay about 200 quid extra for it on other models. You then have some more storage under here and then lo and behold, look, a spare wheel. And it's a full size one at that. Another feature I like is this, look, a little hook to hang that off so it doesn't keep on dropping down on your hands when you're messing about underneath there. Now, if you don't have this fitted, there is a bit of a load lid, but it's not too much of a problem. Now, all cars get this useful ski hatch. There we go, so if you need to carry longer items and two people in the back seats, and to fold down the seats, you pull these levers here. This isn't going down because I folded down the ski hatch, but it will do if I push it. I do like the fact that you've got these levers in the boot because it just makes it easier to fold the seats down. You don't have to run round to the back doors. Then you have a continuous boot floor if you have this once again. If you don't, look, I'll try and show you what it's like. Uh, can you see? There's a ridge in the floor, but it's not too bad. But with this in place, it is absolutely fine. Look, it's easy to slide things to the front, even though it doesn't lie completely flat. What an impressive boot. Let's finish off talking about practicality by going through the Octavia's in-car storage. So the glove box is a decent size. Don't ask. There's some more storage under here. In fact, I'll just hide that away so no one need know. Then you've got some cup holders here and they've got the clever little feet in there which grip onto the bottom of a bottle so you can open it one-handed while you're driving. Um, maybe you shouldn't be drinking while you're driving, even if it is just water. Then there's some storage area here for your mobile phone, which is handy, with two USB ports, so you can just charge it up and hook it up to the infotainment system. Then you've got some more storage here and a huge door bin. And the door bins are lined with felt, so if you put things like keys or coins in there, they don't rattle around. Door bins in the back are also very large. And once again, they are lined with felt. You have a couple of cup holders in the armrest, look at this, there we go, cup holders. See that? You can put a pen in it. Then you've got some pockets on the seat backs, but look at this, there's an extra pocket there, specifically for your mobile device. Look, so you can probably watch it a little bit like that, down between your knees. Down here, there's another storage area, which is just, yeah, I don't know what you're gonna put in there. Then two USB ports there, 
So they are USB-C and those in the front actually, which means that most people are going to have to get an adapter. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the Skoda Octavia. I like that Skoda's got rid of the big gear selector for automatic models and it's been replaced by this switch. The only thing is it feels a little bit cheap, like it's come off some child's toy. Also, there's this weird noise it makes when you turn the car off and on. You can hear something moving about underneath there. Have a listen. The heck is that all about? You can only get the car with one standard, also known as free, paint colour, and that's blue. It's not this blue, this is metallic. It costs over £600. Instead, it's this blue, which is a bit dull. These shiny bits of trim help brighten up the cabin. The only problem is that when you're driving along, they do pick up reflections and they're just right in the corner of your eye and it always like, distracts you, which is annoying. If the engine's running and you dare to open the door, you get a beeping sound like this. It's a reminder that the engine is still running, though it's pretty obvious because you can hear it rattling away and you feel the vibrations, so thanks, Skoda. It gets on your nerves after a while. And I know it's for safety and some of the cars do do it, but it still does me head in. Keyless Go is all well and good, and startup buttons are also all well and good. But I don't know why Skoda puts theirs there in the ignition barrel, when you may as well just not bother with any of that and just do the key in there. Why do it there? Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. The load cover has two-stage retraction. And it's dead easy to remove. Plus, it's nice and light, which isn't always the case on estate cars. And you can store it underneath the false floor. Look at that, lovely. Out of sight, out of mind. As with every Skoda, there is an umbrella in the driver's door. Yeah, really handy. Ha. You get Isofix anchor points on the front passenger seat, so you can fit three child seats in this car. And because it's so roomy, it's easy to fit big, bulky rear-facing seats in either of the three positions. There's also the classic Skoda ice scraper with magnifying glass in the fuel filler cap. Yay! My favourite thing, though, is the fact that the lid for the windscreen wash reservoir doubles as a funnel look, so it's easy to get your water in there. So then, what's this Skoda Octavia like to drive? Well, in town, it's easy. It may be a big car, but it doesn't feel it from behind the wheel. The steering's light, so it's easy to steer around things. The gearbox, once you're moving, does a good job of blending the gears together, though it can be a bit jerky when you're pulling away. I can't complain about the brakes, though. They're strong without being grabby. And then there's a the turning circle. So this estate car, you think it's gonna be terrible, but actually, it's just 10.4 meters, which is way better than something like a Ford Focus Estate and many other small estate cars. It's surprisingly maneuverable and dead easy to do. Then there's a the suspension over bumps. This thing just soaks them up. And you go over this cobbled area here with potholes and it's, yeah, doing all right. That's fine. You do notice sometimes though that the trade-off for that soft suspension is that it can get a little bit bouncy when you're getting a bit faster over an undulating road. Not quite so tied down. The visibility was really good all round, so blind spots aren't too big, got a decent sized back window, and even the rear pillar, that's not too thick either, so you can see over your shoulder for those parking maneuvers. Don't forget this is a long car, but it's not too bad to park. Not too bad at all. Look, even I can do it. And I'm quite frankly, fairly rubbish at parking. Look at that, easy peasy. Can I go a bit further back? Yes, there we go. Is it forward? Slotted in nicely. You know, it's almost like so easy that it's a little bit dull. Now I know diesel has a bad reputation these days, but if you're gonna be doing quite a few miles and usually with a car quite loaded, I would recommend getting this two litre diesel. It does a really nice job, 150 horsepower. It's got enough performance if you're cruising along at 50 like I am now, and you just need to overtake someone. There you go, floor it, gearbox kicks down okay. And then it's pulling quite hard. It's not too noisy for a diesel when you rev it either. They're over 70 miles an hour, no problem at all. It's all just simple and relaxing. It's quite quiet as well. I don't think it's quite as quiet as a Volkswagen Golf. It's the same car underneath, but you can tell that Skoda aren't allowed to make it quite as good as Volkswagen's baby, are they? So if you want a bit more comfort, click on the pop-out banner up there to go and check out my review of the new Volkswagen Golf. But the Golf can't compete with this for outright practicality. And really, for most people, most of the time, it's going to be comfy enough and easy enough to just drive on the motorway. And then there's the economy. So this 150 horsepower diesel engine, that's really good. 
What about when you go on a twisty road though? So I know what's going to happen. It's going to be classic Skoda Octavia. It'll do a decent job without being any fun. Yeah, we're going around the corners. It's holding on. It's leaning a little bit, not too much. Bit of bob. I'm not really finding this enjoyable, nor am I finding it unpleasant. The Skoda Octavia is a car for pragmatic buyers because it just ticks so many boxes. It's for the motor enthusiast who wants good value motoring. It's as simple as that. Rather than the motor enthusiast who likes to hoon things around corners and make tires squeal like that, that's your bag. You need a Ford Focus. If you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, just click on the pop-out banner up there. Finally, let's talk about equipment levels. So the Octavia range kicks off with the SE and they get stuff like LED headlights, cruise control, dual zone climate control, digital driver's display, and an eight inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Next up is the SE technology. So that gets front parking sensors in addition to the standard rear parking sensors, plus a larger touchscreen that now has 10 inches and inbuilt satellite navigation. The infotainment system is pretty much the same though, and it's generally quite easy to use and to skip between the different functions. The sat nav is easy to program and it works pretty well, though you are just gonna use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and Google Maps. One of the problems with it though is that the colors are quite dark, so it's sometimes a bit difficult to see the different features, I mean, especially on the menu screen, look at that, it's not that clear. And another thing that's a bit annoying is that the heat controls are now done through the screen. It's okay that you have the actual heating setting easy to get to, so you can do it with one press. But if you want to alter the fan, you have to press this button, then go into classic air conditioning and then alter the fan speed. And that is a few button presses too many. Overall though, it's fairly decent. Moving on to the digital driver's display, once again, fairly decent. It's a bit dull yet again, could do with a bit more color on it, but you can cycle through different views, some of them which are pointless, and you can flip through various data that you need to get on the car, such as MPG and all that kind of stuff. Overall, it's a fairly decent infotainment system, but it's not gonna blow your socks off. At the top of the range is the SEL, and that adds these faux leather seats, which are electrically operated, and they've actually been approved by a German back health organization, because they're so comfy, apparently. You also get adaptive cruise control, which will keep you a safe distance from the car in front, and auto steer to keep you in lane, and keyless go, yay. But all that does add to the price. So I've got the spec sheet for this car here, 32,000 pounds, but you don't want to pay that, do you? So what you want to do is go into Carway, and use our configurator to build your ideal Skoda Octavia. And I'm actually building my ideal one now. Is it this SEL or is it not? To find out and the saving I'm going to get on this car, click on the pop-out banner up there to find out exactly what the car is and the deal I found for you. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Skoda Octavia? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist it. Yeah, it's not particularly exciting, but it's a really, really good car. Not quite so tied down, but that's a small price to pay for the Now, <laughs> Watson. I don't know what I'm doing. What can I do for you? You can help me with my lines because I'm just being crap today. What the oh, I forgot.